Hey guys, Mr. Edrick back here with uh, you to begin a new unit and in this unit we're going to go back over transformations and uh, tie in everything that we've learned so far this uh, semester. This is our last unit that we'll be focusing on transformations and I uh, will also introduce a new type of function that you might have seen before in the past um, but not in Algebra 2. So. Um, just to recap some things that we've learned about transformations, you can um, start with some type of parent and transform that parent either up or down by moving it or uh, left or right and uh, vertically stretching or shrinking it, horizontally stretching or shrinking it, or even reflecting it, which means to flip it either upside down over the x-axis or left to right over the y-axis. We're going to see all of those things come back up again um, in this unit for all of the types of functions that we've had so far. So that would be things like radicals, um, square roots or cube roots, or exponential functions and logarithms. Uh, all these are gonna come back into play. And uh, also just general types of functions. So um, for example, if I started with a graph uh, as indicated here, where we have a uh, transformed function, g of x, and it has transformed its parent in blue here, we would want to know how has it transformed the blue graph, right? How has the red changed from what the original parent was? And what we should see is that it has the same general shape, right? It's only moved location, so it hasn't been stretched or shrunk, hasn't been flipped. Mainly it's just moved location, and that location has been three units right, right? Comparing uh, this center to this one, we can see that the graph of our transformed function has uh, shifted three units to the right. So, uh, what does that mean? How can we describe g of x as a transformation of f of x? Well, it turns out g of x, in this case, know your a's, b's, h's, and k's. g of x would be the same thing as if we took f of x and subtracted 3 next to x, right? Changing h um, would move the graph 3 units to the right. Remember, if you uh, subtract next to x, you move to the right. If you add next to x, you move to the left. If you add or subtract off to the side, that's when you're moving up or down. So we're not moving up or down in this case. Uh, we're moving to the right. This is what we would be looking for for this type of generalized uh, graphing problem. Uh, something that we've talked about very recently is exponents and how you could find transformations of uh, parents in this context would be to take a look at a graph of the uh, parent given here which is 3 to the power of x and that's what we have graphed on the left side of the page and we want to know what's the um, transformed function over here. So. This is the graph for g of x. This is the graph for f of x. Okay. How has this graph changed this one? Well, again, the, the shape is generally the same, right? It's uh, exponential growth, right? It's rapidly increasing uh, over time. But it has moved. And what I would recommend doing in this type of problem is one of two different things. Uh, number one, take a look at your asymptote. So in this case, that would be an asymptote at a y equals zero, right? The graph flattens towards zero. It never touches it, never crosses that asymptote, but it gets very close to it. Versus this one down here. And you can see that that one is lower than um, the x-axis. In fact, that dotted line or the asymptote you could create would be at negative three. Again, the graph flattens towards negative three. So the graph has clearly moved down three units. But it's also moved to the right side of the page, right? Um, if I just move this down three units, I would actually not have my graph cross um, the x-axis at five comma zero. So what you might want to do is to take a coordinate point on the uh, first graph that's given to you. And in this case, we see a coordinate point here at uh, 0, 1. And compare it to the coordinate point that would match uh, that same location for your transformed function 
Here that would be at 4 comma negative 2. Okay, 4 comma negative 2 is where that dot has now changed. So it has moved down 3 units, right? 1 minus 3 is negative 2, but it is also moved four units to the right. Zero plus four changes the x-coordinate here. Okay, so we've moved four units right, and we can use these twin facts to create our transformed function of uh, the parent that we've been given here. So in this case, g of x, remember your a's, b's, h's, and k's. Uh, will equal your parent, change h by uh, subtracting next to x in the exponent, and then if we move up or down, that means we're adding or subtracting off to the side of our parent. In this case, we're moving down, so we are subtracting by 3. That would be your transformed function. What I'd recommend for a lot of these problems, um, as you're going through them, is to be graphing the results. Does this graph, if you created one on Desmos, match g of x given here? If it does, that's how you know you can verify um, you found the correct transformed function. If not, then something has probably gone wrong and you need to rethink if you might have switched up your h's versus your k's, or if you have an addition sign instead of a subtraction, things of that nature. So um, graphing, as I've said in the past, always is useful for a double checking method. And I would recommend that, again, going forward. <clears throat> One more general type of um, function problem that we've talked about is how to describe and how to create um, from a parent to a child. Okay, How would I describe what's going on here? What are we seeing? Um, well, for example, we've just talked about how if we're subtracting off to the side, we move down six units in this case. right? That uh, negative 6 was not part of your parent, okay? You're changing that square root function, subtracting 6 off to the side moves it down 60 units. So whatever a normal square root function looks like, and it's normally a jump, whole thing's going to move down 6 units. We're also moving left, as indicated here, 1 unit, okay? Because we're adding next to x, not subtracting like we've seen in previous examples. We have a uh, 1 half on the inside, right, inside of the square root, inside of our parent. Now, we haven't talked about this in a while, but remember or recall that this refers to a horizontal either stretch or shrink. And horizontal uh, is a keyword you need to think to flip the number that you've been given. So 1 over 2 will become 2 over 1, or a uh, 2, right, 2 divided by 1 is just 2. And that turns out to be a number bigger than one, so it's going to be a horizontal stretch by uh, two. In other words, it's going to get horizontally um, stretched. Whatever a normal jump's going to look like is going to be longer horizontally. And finally, this negative. Remember, negative always means that we have a reflection. It just depends on what kind of reflection we have. Is it over the x-axis? Are we flipping the whole graph upside down? Right? A normal jump looks like this. It's now going to be flipped over the x-axis, or is that jump going to be flipped over the y-axis? Okay. Uh, and in this case, since the negative is on the inside of the parent, it's a reflection over the y-axis. If the negative was in front of the parent, in front of the square root, then it would be over the x-axis. But what I would do is um, definitely graph this type of problem as well, just to match your descriptions. Does the graph flip like you're describing it? Does it stretch horizontally like you're describing it? Move to the left, move down, and uh, it should. Okay. And one more general type of parent function here um, that we can use a description of. This is like working backwards from what we did here. Okay. In this problem, we were given numbers and asked to describe in words. Now we're being given words and asked to create a uh, function that looks something like this. Of course, it's got to match what our parent is, so it's going to be a logarithm. Uh, <clears throat> so, let's create a transformed function. In this case, g of x. Okay, we know that we're going to have a log with a base 5, but we have a couple of things here, like uh, we're moving 7 units up. 
So all the uh, way over here, I'm going to add 7 off to the side. I know that I'm moving the graph up from where it would have started. I know I am shifting 4 units left. Okay. So wherever x is, I'm going to need to add next to x, just like I've done up here, where I'm moving to the left. So um, in parentheses, where the x can be found in the parent, I will put x plus 4, adding, not subtracting. And then finally, I am also reflecting it, and this is the last transformation here, over the x-axis. So just like we've talked about uh, a second ago, reflection over the y-axis is a negative on the inside of the parent. Reflection over the x-axis will be a negative in front of the parent. In fact, the negative symbol is the first thing that we're going to see on the uh, other side of this equation. This would be what your um, transformed function would look like. Okay, It's got everything that the parent has. It has log base 5. It has an x. But uh, in this case, we have additional transform, uh, transformations happening. And uh, if you graph this here, as I've mentioned in the past, you should be able to verify that all these descriptions are showing up. So that takes care of things that we've already discussed. It's a uh, pretty um, good recap of those things, I think. That moves us into the new type of function that we're going to talk about, and um, that's absolute values. So if you haven't seen absolute values in a while, or maybe you haven't seen them at all, we'll talk about what that is here and now. Um, absolute value functions and um, expressions change what's found inside of them to positive numbers, unless that number, of course, is zero, um, in which case everything's going to simplify to a zero. And what I mean by that and you have these two little bars here, right? This would be an absolute value of x, for example. If I took the absolute value of 1 minus 5, I would simplify whatever I have on the inside. So 1 minus 5 is negative 4. The absolute value of negative 4 changes it to positive. So it's going to be positive 4. Okay? And that's all there is to it. Um, you're just changing negatives on the inside of those bars to a positive, or if it's positive, like um, the absolute value of 3 minus 1 is the absolute value of 2, and that's just 2. Okay. If it's already positive, it stays positive. Um, one more example would be if I have the absolute value of a negative 2. That's going to change that negative 2 to a positive 2. But notice I have a negative in front. Okay. Absolute values don't matter for anything that happens in front or um, off to the side. All you're doing here Okay, is simplifying uh, this to be a positive 2. Now you have to apply the fact that there's a negative in front. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4 as well. So um, just simplify whatever you have on the inside of those bars first. Turn it positive if you need to. If it's a 0, just leave it as a 0. Um, and then work with whatever you have on the outside of the absolute value expression to continue simplifying from there. So um, now that we've kind of got a bit of a grasp of what absolute value means, the parent function for an absolute value uh, looks like this. Okay. Like I said before, it's just those bars on the opposite sides of x um, would be the parent. Now, as we've talked about now for a good bit of time, um, both in this semester and this video, parents can be transformed left, right, up, or down, okay, vertically stretched, vertically shrunk, or reflected. So A's, B's, H's, and K's will still apply to things like the absolute value function, okay? For example, um, if I subtract off to the side, that means I'm moving the graph or the function down one unit. Or if I subtract next to X, I'm moving it to the right. Or if I'm adding next to X, I would move the graph to the left or uh, uh, the function to the left. If I have a negative in front, I have a reflection over the x-axis happening here. I'm flipping my graph upside down. So <clears throat> let's take a look at what the graph of a parent function will look like and how that's going to change based on whatever your child or transformed function is. Uh, the best way I can describe an absolute value function and what the parent will look like or you know, absolute values in general is it's a V shape. Okay? It's a V. It's got a vertex. And usually, okay. That will be at the origin, right? That little vertex, that um, 
tipping point of the arrow uh, is at the origin for the parent. Now, what you can see here in the red graph is that this has moved somehow, right? So where has it moved? Well, it's moved one unit down and two units to the right, just like we see here, as well as it's flipped upside down. That V is now upside down, and that's because it's been reflected over uh, the X axis, as well as having had those other two transformations moving to the right by two, down by one. That's how you can transform a absolute value function and its graph. Okay, so uh, let's move on to something a little bit more specific. Um, if we start with a parent function again, uh, the parent's always the same. <clears throat> and if we want to try to describe the transformations happening here, we would say, well, we're moving nine units up, right? We're shifting nine units up because we're adding off to the side of the parent. We are also shifting three units left, right? Know your left versus right, as well as H's versus K. Um, anything that happens inside of the absolute value function changes things horizontally. Anything that happens outside changes things vertically. That's something that we've talked about in the past. Hopefully that's a good reminder to you all. Uh, <clears throat> so for example, three units left, add next to X versus uh, to the right would be subtraction. This again is something horizontal. Right, we're multiplying inside the absolute value, inside the parent, and uh, we're going to flip this number upside down. That's a 1 over 5 now, which is going to be a shrink. Okay. In other words, that V is going to get skinnier. Um, <clears throat> This over here would be a vertical stretch, right? We don't flip anything vertical. It's vertical because it's in front. It's outside of the absolute value that you're multiplying there. So there's a vertical stretch by four. It's going to get taller, right? In fact, that V is going to be very skinny and tall now that we've applied these transformations. And one more thing that we can say is happening here um, is that we have a reflection. across the y-axis. Now, in this case, that doesn't matter too, too much because remember, that's gonna, um, that negative is going to be gotten rid of uh, whenever you have a negative on the absolute value, inside of an absolute value, not outside. When you have a negative inside an absolute value, that's going to change to positive. And think about what happens if you flip a V right to left. It doesn't really change the shape of a V, right? If you flip a V upside down, like here, okay, that's going to look different. But if I was going to flip a V this way, it still looks like a V. Um, so reflecting across the y-axis doesn't show much of a noticeable difference. In fact, it doesn't show it at all. Uh, but it is something to know that has tried to be applied as a transformation to your problem. So uh, this is what I would describe as my transformations. And I would also double check that by graphing. You should be able to see all of them except for that reflection across the y-axis. And uh, one final problem that we'll talk about here is uh, we've been given an absolute value graph. We want to know what's the transformation. So that does require you to know how the parent looks. Okay, you do need to know that this blue function here is the parent function graph. It's normally like a V with its vertex at the origin. Whereas in this problem over here, our vertex, okay, is roughly at three comma one. So clearly we have moved, we have transformed this function. Um, we haven't stretched or shrunk it. We haven't flipped it or reflected it. So we could say that we've transformed right three units and up one unit. And therefore what we suspect should be our transformed function would be something along these lines, g of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3. Okay, wrap that in those bars, absolute value symbol. And then plus 1 off to the side because we are moving up. Okay, and uh, if you graph this, should match the graph that you're given. Again, when you're transforming functions or describing transformations or creating them, um, graphing is always a useful tool that you should be using throughout the process. So, <clears throat> that is transformations of functions in general. They can all show up back in this unit that we've seen in the past. 
as well as this new one. And um, this is a bit of a shorter unit, so we're going to cover this, one more major topic, and then one more smaller one, and then uh, we will have a bit of a break. So um, hope that this jogs your memory on some of those transformations. Know your A's, B's, H's, and K's, and I will see you in our next video.